The following program contains scenes which are violent in nature. The material is being performed by professionals and should not be attempted at home. Viewer discretion is advised. Welcome to the season finale of Urban Self Defense. I'm your host, Mike Arsenault. Over the past several weeks, we've looked at what happens when everyday urban situations become dangerous. Jason Carter of the Snow Lion Martial Arts Jiu Jitsu Academy has shown you some simple self defense techniques that could potentially save your life. In this episode, we have two special guests who will show you some unique safety situations for the elderly and the disabled. In this first scenario, Jason will portray a person with limited mobility in one arm, for example, a stroke victim and it'll show you how to use an unconventional weapon to defend yourself against an attack. We're mixing things up in our final episode. I get to beat Kevin up right off the hop this time. Jason, so, walking along with my cane, one arm is immobilized. Exactly, in this case, it like, could be an incident where someone might have gone through a stroke or just has an injury to one arm and they're unable to use that arm. Okay. Okay, in this case, you're out for your stroll and you're basically gonna be attacked. Man's gonna we'll come up and grab you by your lapel. And Kevin doesn't fight fair, so he's attacking the person with only one arm. Exactly. So he's gonna grab you, lapel, Okay. Okay. First thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take your stick, and you're gonna overhand swing it, striking basically his collarbone, his shoulder line. Boom. So it's like a first serve in tennis. Exactly. Okay. So you come over top, strike. Okay. Excellent. From there now you're gonna tilt the tip towards the ground and trace down the outside of his arm. Trace, trace, trace. Now tuck the first about 10 inches or so under your armpit. Okay. Okay. Now draw this elbow towards me. As you do so, you're putting a great deal of pressure on his wrist, okay, in the back of his hand. From here, you're going to take the end of this, strike him to the head. How many times? Three times the charm? Three times the charm. At least okay. until he lets go. Four. <laughs> okay, he lets go, and okay. then that's it? Typically, by this point, it's a great deal of pain if you already str struck him a bunch of times to the head, and normally that's all he really requires. Okay, let's try that again, just a little bit slower. Okay, so I'm walking along, he's grabbing... Grabbing. My shirt. So I'm swinging. Now, am I just holding this normally as I would walk, or should I choke up, like pretend I have two strikes nope. on me and choke I up? I wouldn't worry about trying to adjust your hand because remember, this happens so quick, you have to react fast. As soon as he touches you, you're just going to overhand swing it like in tennis, crack. Okay. So even if I'm walking like this, I can still, I still have to slide it down a little bit, I guess, to exactly. get the swinging motion. Yep. Okay. And where am I connecting here? So I have shoulder. I mean, against his, his jawline there, or you want, like, where are we aiming for? Right, basically right across the shoulder into the collarbone. Okay, and again, is this a nerve, or? Uh, it's a very painful point. There is a lot of clusters of nerves both sides, of the, basically, of this muscle. But we don't want to hit him in the neck. We don't want to break his neck, right? But we want to start stopping him from doing what he's doing. So is it possible if I hit him here, that might release the hold as well, or it would could, it not do it enough? It could very well. It might just loosen his grip, though, or be a big guy like Kevin. It might not do too much. Okay, so hit him. Sorry, Kev. <laughs> right off the shoulder blade. So then I point the tip towards the ground. Draw it down his arm. Under tuck, my armpit. Nice and deep. Nice okay. and deep up on your armpit. I and now, tuck. Yeah, keeping this stationary. And gonna, same thing here. I don't have to choke up on the nope, cane here at all. I can pull. Same spot. Pull, pull down. Pull now, down. This is putting what pressure on his wrist? Pressure on his wrist, and if you're up a little higher, all the small bones in the back of his hand. If you keep this stiff and down, right? Just pull. See, that, so that looks move. painful even. Exactly. Yeah. So is that going to break, is the goal here just to, for him to release his grip, or are we actually trying to break bones in the wrist and hand? Biggest thing is getting him to let go of you. He's touching you. He's in your personal space, right? So and you want to get rid of this person fast. So the real damage comes from when you start hitting him with the butt of your walking okay, stick. So. Tucked. That makes him rethink way. about why he's touching you. 
And then I have him, again, we've said this before, keep your friends close and enemies closer, right? So I'm drawing him in towards me, so now I can strike. Exactly. And then, just put, where am I going? Just anywhere on uh, Kevin's face here? Depending on where he is, jawline is very effective, okay? Temple, anywhere basically in the side of the head, because again, you don't get choosy sometimes in self-defense. Apply it, cause that pain compliance, and then swing. Or I could aim for his beard. Thanks for shaving for the last episode, Kev. Way Way to be professional. So just, again, so yeah, anywhere in the face is okay. Exactly. Okay, let's try that full speed, Kev, if you're ready for it. I'm ready for it. Okay. Boom, boom, boom. You know, that seems effective, but it seems like I'm I'm missing something, Jason. Well, we are missing one thing. You know, if you take this after you've done your final strikes, you can always just take this. Now it's urban self-defense. We'll be right back after these messages. I'm Chris the Man Clements, UFC welterweight. You can catch me on Urban Self Defense with Jason Carter, only on Rogers TV. More Urban Self Defense tips and techniques this fall on Rogers TV. Welcome back to the show. I'm joined now by one of my aforementioned special guests, my grandma. Grandma, how are you doing today? Very well, thank you, Michael. Thank you for being here with us. What do you think of Urban Self Defense? I think it's wonderful. I think it's so important to teach people how to defend themselves. Perfect. We'll give you that $10 after the show. Now, I see you're carrying your purse. Now, do you carry your purse everywhere with you? Everywhere. What do you have in there? Uh, oh, well, there's identification, lots of cards and money. And Some money? Okay. Yeah. Maybe for your grandson for his next Christmas no, present? No, not particularly. Right. <laughs> okay. Now, in this next scenario, Jason is going to portray an elderly woman carrying a purse, and he's going to be attacked by a resident thug, Kevin. Kevin. Now, Ke- Kevin, meet Grandma. Hi, Kevin. I feel like I know you already from watching <laughs> you on television. Let's see what happens. Grandma, now it's your time to shine. How are you feeling so far? Oh, pretty good. Yes, like I told you, I'm not new to television. Okay. I was on the show 40 years ago. <laughs> Excellent. We'll try and find the, that in the archives. Mm-hmm. Uh, so how are you feeling? You get a chance to beat up Kevin with your cane. Oh, I can hardly wait. <laughs> well, actually, no, not this time, Mike. Grandma gets to lay a beat down on you. We can't have this family on family violence, Jason. <laughs> Everybody has to take their licks. All right, Kevin, see you later. <laughs> well, that's fine with me. Hope you enjoy yourself and good luck. <laughs> well, Mike, this time you get to be the thug. Well, first of all, Jason, I don't think thug would be an appropriate term. I think Grandma would agree loving grandson might be a little bit more appropriate. Well, you are my loving grandson, but in this TV series, we're going to call you a thug. Well, the fame's going to your head already, but okay, so let's, let's start this off. So Grandma's walking along, enjoying a nice day in the park. Enjoying this beautiful day in the park, mm. and you're going to come up behind her. You're the thug. Okay. Okay. Grandma's walking. You're going to come up and basically grab her purse from her or attempt to grab her purse. Okay. okay. Mm. Once you guys your purse, what you're going to do now is before we hit them, I want to take you through a simple action. Now, Grandma, if you would like to have gran- great grandchildren, let's take it easy on this one. <laughs> so, what you do is turn towards them a little bit. What you do is you lift your stick up, walk your stick up, and it's a circle, counterclockwise. Good. Okay. We're not there yet, Grandma. <laughs> Just take it easy. Okay. okay. So now what we're going to do, he grabs your purse. Yeah. Okay. You're going to face yeah. him first okay. thing. And it's just bring your arm straight up right between his legs. Mm-hmm. Bang. Good. That got his attention. Now you're going to do that counterclockwise turn. Big counterclockwise. You come down hitting him in the back of the arm. Mm-hmm. So now why, why is grandma hitting me here? Because inside your forearm line, there's a series of nerves right in here. Yep. And when you hit them hard enough, you will lose fe- feeling to your hand. Your fingers will go all tingly, the tip. And what that will do is help start release your grip 
on her purse. So that's a good tip for, for grandma. She shouldn't be trying to hit me anywhere on the arm. There is kind of method to your madness of hitting me right in those clusters. Exactly. Nerves. You know, what, through a lot of our episodes, we always attack the nerves. That equalizes the playing field. She needs some equalization and she's going to use it. Well, I think the cane is equalizing enough. She doesn't need more of an advantage. Well, in this case, she does. Okay, yeah, so, so she hits you in the arm. Yeah. Your arm goes numb. Yep, so you'll draw yeah. back again and hit you basically what we call that outer femoral nerve, that nerve that runs down your leg. Again, causing that leg to go numb. So again, this is grandma's not aiming for either kind of my, my glutes or, or the back nope. of my knee. We want to hit that Halfway nerve. Halfway between your hip joint and your knee. Okay, and that's going to cause my right leg to go numb. Right on your seam line. The great thing about wearing jeans, it gives everybody a target. Right dead center. Okay. So, so she's hit, Oh, I should right be there. hitting there. Right hit there, him. yeah. Now as he goes down, and you're going to hit him again. And just by chance, if he doesn't want to stay there, I want you to whack him again. Him again. And, and then I guess, do I step on him? Did you step? <laughs> I don't think we need to step. I think <laughs> oh. this, this, is done, right. this is done enough. Okay. Okay. It's pretty good. Grandma, do you have any questions about that before we try a little bit quicker speed? Well, I really can't think of any other than I don't want to hurt my grandson. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually a great point, and she shouldn't be trying to hurt her grandson. But is there so, Jason, with with the purse? So, yes. if she if Grandma is holding it in the crook of her arm, right? If she keeps that arm close to her tightly, is that yes. how how women should be walking with their purse? I would suggest for younger ladies, it's advisable. You can keep it tight to your body. It's harder for someone to get a hold of it. But as we get aged on in our lives, we're always concerned about falls. So at that time, you might want to start slipping it down, even carrying it in your hand, because at least if someone grabs it in your hand, you have a better chance of letting it go and not being pulled mm -hmm. to the ground, mm -hmm. which can cause an injury. So how do you normally mm -hmm. hold your purse, Grandma? See, I think I would hold it like this normally. Okay, but that, again, so it's the same thing can same happen thing. Exactly. if we're down here. We'll do the, we can run you want to try that? Exactly. Okay, so let's try. All right, do you want to try the, your movements again, Grandma, so you make sure you so can give me... So straight up, and hit him oh, in the yeah. groin, and you're going to do a circle. Hit him in the arm. Mm -hmm. Now you're gonna pull this back towards your ear. You're gonna whack him in the on the leg. Leg, and then pick one more time. And then I'm gonna whack him, hit in, the him back. in the back. And if he doesn't stay down, what are you gonna do? I'm gonna step on him. You're gonna step on, him <laughs> or whack him one more time. Okay, now Grandma, you're not knighting. Oh. You're not the Queen of England. You're not knighting someone. Okay, so <laughs> let's let's show what you got oh, and well, really no, really give right. it give I'll it to me good. Okay. All right, here we go. <laughs> this will be good. This oh, will be okay. good. Ready? <laughs> So he grabs your purse, you're going to right up the groin. Oh. You got to look though. Oh. So you want to right from there, okay. straight up. Boom. Oh, oh. Groin. God, that hurt. Swing around, you're going to chop that arm. Remember, you're going to pull back again, hit him in the leg. And hit you in the leg. And he goes out, hit, hit you him on again. the back, and I'll hit, hit you, him you again if you don't get down. Excellent. Okay, good. Let's try that one more time. So now, now it's full speed. I'm actually taking my Christmas present out of there, all that there. money. So remember, groin first. That's going to get his attention. He's not I don't know how anything. I get that out of my mind, but... <laughs> okay, here we go. Okay. Oh. He can't be looking. No. Okay. <laughs> so he comes up, okay. he grabs your purse. And I'm like, oh, I have to turn, turn Oh, that, that got it, yeah. And Him in the arm. And there you go. And there, there you go. go. And one more. And there you go. Get out. Okay, that's... Grandma, I think you got it now. You're a pro. Jason, we'll yeah. have to talk about this after... <laughs> I like this show. lady. <laughs> Thank oh you, Grandma. Thank Lord. you, Jason. We'll be right back on Urban Self Defense. Stay in and catch up with your favorite shows on Rogers TV with our holiday marathons. Enjoy the Urban Self Defense Marathon Thursday, December 29th, beginning at 12:30. Welcome back to USD. I'm joined now by our second guest of the episode, Kimber Bogema. Now, Kimber, are you familiar with the show? Absolutely. I often wondered if there were different portions of, of the moves that you use that could be applied to somebody that sits in a wheelchair. Well, they definitely can. As you'll see in this next scenario, Jason will be in the wheelchair and will show you how to defend yourself from an attacker like Kevin. That's amazing. It will actually remove a lot of the fear of traveling around in a wheelchair by yourself. Well, I'll tell you, after you're done this episode, Kevin's going to be the only one left with some fear. That's great.
We'd like to thank Motion Specialties London for providing us with the wheelchair. Kimber, are you ready to do some damage here? I am. Okay, Jason, start us off. Excellent. Okay, we're going to take off where the last scenario was. He's going to, this gentleman's going to come in and give you a two-hand choke. Pretty horrible situation. So he's going to reach in, two-hand choke. From now, what you want to do is you need to break his space, get him towards you a little more. So you're going to bring your hand up and swat this nerve right here on the outside of his arm. Okay, as soon as he starts to bend, you're going to take, that, take a fist and you're going to punch just to the inside of the hip joint. Whoa, hold on. This is urban self-defense. Why is she not punching the groin? <laughs> ah, in this case, this is almost this is effective or even more effective than punching or striking someone to the groin. She's actually striking into the pelvic well, joint. Can we, just, can we open Kevin up towards the camera here, just, just so we can see? So basically, instead of hitting him in the groin, I'm hitting, we're striking him just inside the pelvic joint. And so, what is that? Is that a cluster of nerves? There's is a that cluster the idea? of nerves in there. What that does is it will cause his whole leg to go numb. Uh, we did a couple scenarios where we we're striking the shoulder joint. Same idea applies here. You strike that joint, the cluster of nerves are inside, it will get very excited and it will lose feeling in his leg. Now, is Kimber making a fist for that strike or how is... I would suggest a fist. If you have very strong fingers, you can use your fingertips. But I would suggest for most people, drive your two four knuckles into that joint. Could you protrude the knuckles as well or is that going to maybe cause an injury? Again, you can only if you're strong enough and your fingers are strong enough to do that. So I suggest for the average person, Take your take your two four knuckles, and that's what you want to punch into that joint with. Okay, so Kimber, let's see let's see the, the fist fist of fury here. Now is this is this a nerve here that's there's helping a, me to bring a, him down? Yep, there's a nerve right here in the arm, which is will that cause painful. It can be, yes. okay. which will cause his arm to bend for you. Okay. Right? And at the same time, it does affect his fingertips a little more. So you're going to swat that hard. Okay. So that's going to bring him towards you. So you're going to strike. Okay. Now he's off balance a little bit. His legs numb. You're going to reach up and grab that far hand. Now, simple enough is just roll it over, pinky to the sky, okay, and bring him down towards you. Now, from here, you can take your palm heel safely, keeping the lock on, and palm heel on the side of the head several times. Well, I'm noticing here Kimber's got pretty impressive nails. Now, should she be sure to tuck the fingernails in towards her palm so she doesn't break her fingers when she goes for the strike? Typically, yeah. Typical good palm heels, you roll your fingers in. We discussed this before. If they're rolled in, they're a lot stronger. If their head fingers are out, they can get bent and broken. Okay. So you want to keep them in. So let's try it again. Absolutely. So he comes in, does the choke. So you're going to bring him towards you, strike. Perfect. Grab the wrist, bring him over, strike, strike, strike. Perfect. Can, can we just go back to the wrist grab for a second, sure. if you don't mind? Yeah. So yeah. when so when Kimber goes and, then, and she grabs the meat and then, and then turns, Yes. Grabs me to his hand, then turns. Where is that putting pressure on his wrist or elbow? Right or? now, it's putting a great deal of pressure on his wrist. It's a wrist lock. As long as the fingers are pointed towards the sky, the wrist is rolled right over. And there's a great deal of pressure on that poor wrist right now. She so could break his wrist. And so it's important that I would keep that really close to my body. You want to keep so it that he tight. Can't get away. Exactly. If it's okay. tight to your body, now you can use your body as a point of base and fulcrum. Right. So as you hold this here, and you just bend over a little tiny bit towards him. So oh. look at his face. Wow. Oh yeah, it got ugly looking. It did. It hurt. <laughs> so that's the idea. So you bring this lock in. He he's going to be in pain. And then you're able to hit him. And that's how I get close enough because if he doesn't buckle, then I can't reach. Exactly. Fantastic. So even though he's a lot bigger than I am and he has a really long reach, I can still defend myself. Exactly. That's amazing. Those two things that bring him in towards you is striking that nerve, which drops him in towards you. And once you apply that lock and do a little bend forwards, that brings him right down on the ground, right Fantastic. in front of you, right within your own hitting range. Amazing. Do you have any advice for just on the initial choke? Because, I mean, being choked is going to be a pretty traumatic experience. Yes. Any tips to... I don't know, I hate to say make it easier, but to just be ready for it instead of kind of panicking and not remembering to go through your moves. One thing you can do first thing, if someone goes to choke you, especially from a frontal choke, just drop your chin. It makes it a lot harder for them to get around to your throat. Okay, can we see that? In Let's like this? Yeah, just tuck your chin okay. down. Tuck your chin down. So if you go to choke you, just tuck your chin down. See? And it's a lot harder. He'd have to fight to get into that position. Right, and as, he, as he's trying to work that position, she can still do almost the same technique. So her hand can come up here, swat that. Still, I still have that. Exactly. exactly. Now you go back to the hand, grab the hand in the lock. So the same technique applies. Fantastic. But if you tuck your chin first, it gives you a little more time to work with the situation. It takes me a while to get away. Exactly. So, and that's what you always tell me that you, this is self-defense to give myself enough time to get, get away. away. So is there a way from that position, especially if I've broken his wrist, can I make sure he goes down to give me those few extra seconds to get away? Yeah, there's other, yeah, there's things that we can add to that. Um, we could give one a quick try right now. So he goes so for the choke. So he comes in and I get, get him into this position. 
and I have him down. Now let's say I've broken his wrist and I'm hammering him here. Okay. Now if I want him to the ground I now. Want you, now he's going to come back, reach up under his elbow, roll his elbow right over and push down. And now he's down at a lower level. If you really push down and give him a shove forwards, he's going to move away from you. And look how big he is, and look how defenseless I don't feel anymore. I'll tell you what, Kimber, I don't think anyone's going to be messing with you <laughs> at all, good. that's for sure. Thank you, Kevin, Jason, Kimber. We'll be right back on Urban Self Defense. Learn how to defend yourself while being entertained at the same time. Self-defense expert Jason Carter demonstrates a variety of safety techniques on Urban Self Defense Season 2. Tuesdays at 7.30, only on Rogers TV. Welcome back to Urban Self-Defense. Now, Jason, we've covered a lot of varied defenses today, but there are connecting themes that the elderly and disabled should remember, correct? Exactly. Uh, one, for example, is if you're out traveling and you're, you're a senior and you're with an attendant, for example, your daughter, your son, or, or even your grandson, let them carry your purse and, and, your, and those valuable belongings. Wait, hold on. So you're telling me if I'm out with my grandma, I have to carry your purse around? You want to be a good grandson. True, I, I may look like a manly man, but I don't know if I'm that comfortable in my masculinity to carry around a purse. But for my grandma, grandma, I will do it for you. Nice thing is it takes that danger from them and puts it onto you. And you being a younger person, chances of being attacked becomes less. Um, one other thing that you uh, always remember, this is with attendants again, is with your out traveling, and you are the attendant, obviously you're out always trying to keep an eye on obstacles that you know your senior citizen friend well, it has to be aware of. But you also need to be aware of the other dangers around you. You are their eyes and ears. You have to use your mindfulness to realize that and keep that eye on that danger that could be around. So just because a senior citizen or a disabled person is with someone else, with an attendant, doesn't mean they're, they're not going to be approached. There's still the chance to be attacked. You're 100% right. And four eyes are better than two. And, and most people, if you are looking to mug someone, they're going to see perhaps a senior citizen and another person just as, oh, I just have to worry about one person, right? There's not two exactly. people that I have to attack. It's just I neutralize the attendant, and then I can take what I want from the, from the senior citizen, correct? You're 100% right. So what, what else about purses? Because I know in our um, Instant Teller episode, we had a scenario where you just threw the wallet and kind of gave it up. Now, could you use the same techniques for a purse as well? Exactly. Big thing to remember, same as your wallet, same as your purse. If someone does get a hold of it, give it up. Because in a lot of cases, as we age, we're always concerned about falls, that fall danger. And last thing you need is someone to tug that purse and you hold on to it and get pulled to the ground and then suddenly have another injury because of that. There's nothing in your purse that you can't replace. That's a good point. I mean, if you have pictures of grandkids, you have money, credit cards, whatever, that can all be taken care of. But I mean, if you fall and break bones, that's a serious, long-lasting injury. And, that, and that's right. And that's one thing you should always try to avoid. A couple other things to always keep try to be mindful of when you do your business, and this is for, you know, for disabled people and, and senior citizens, try to do most of your business during daylight hours where you have lots of light and there's lots of people around. Try to avoid doing it at night when there is more dangers about. And there's not really, I mean, there's not a concern about that now. In the summer, we have daylight till 8, 30, 9 o'clock at night, but in the winter, I mean, it's dark at 5 o'clock, right? And, so there's no point of going to the bank, going grocery shopping at that time, right? If, if you're elderly, you're, good chance you're going to be retired, you have all day to get those, those activities done. And you're right. And try to get those done during those daylight hours. And one final thing to really watch out for, and this is a good aid that you can do, you can purchase personal alarms. They're just a very loud squealer. You press them, they get very loud, and it draws that attention towards you. That's if you don't have an attendant around. Right? Whoa. Well, Kevin, how you doing? We could have actually used a personal alarm there before uh, Kevin approached us. Uh, Kevin, you enjoy yourself. I did very much so, thank Excellent, you. okay. Well, gentlemen, it's been quite a ride over these past few weeks. We've learned a lot of different defenses. We've learned how to strike the groin, which I think is probably the big takeaway from this series. Thank you all for watching. It was a great experience. For Kevin Ball, Jason Carter, I'm Mike Arsenault. We'll see you next season on Urban Self-Defense. <laughs>